select the major product of the following reaction. So if we look at our starting material, we see that we have an epoxide. So epoxides are these three-membered ring cyclic ethers. So epoxides are a lot more reactive than other ethers because of the ring strains. These will undergo ring opening reactions with nucleophiles. And where the reaction occurs, whether it occurs at the more substituted carbon of the epoxide or the less substituted carbon of the epoxide depends on the reaction conditions. So if you are using a base, as we are in this case, we can see that this is sodium ethoxide. So that is sodium plus, right? So the presence of that sodium tells us that that is, this is a salt and sodium is positive one. So whatever is attached to it has a negative one charge. And so we have the ethoxide and this is a base. So under basic conditions, the ring opening of the epoxide takes place at the less substituted carbon of the epoxide. So that tells us when we're drawing our mechanism that we're gonna have this base attack this less substituted carbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and redraw the base a little bit closer so we can see where the reaction is occurring. So you have a negative charge here. And so this is attacking the less substituted carbon of the epoxide and breaking open that bond. So let's go ahead and number these two carbon atoms of the epoxide. I'm not gonna number the benzene rings. I think we can see that. But just these two carbon atoms so we can definitively see what is bound to what in our product. So from this step, um, let me draw the two carbon atoms of the epoxide to start with. So here's one and two. And so what we're showing here with this arrow is that we're forming a new bond between this oxygen and the carbon two. So we will draw that new bond to oxygen and it's still attached of course to the ethyl group. Um, carbon two, we broke the bond to the oxygen. So there's not gonna be a bond to oxygen there. Um, but carbon one does still have a single bond to that oxygen. So we will go ahead and place that in there and we put an extra lone pair of electrons on that oxygen. So it now has a negative charge. And then carbon one was actually a chiral center. We see this phenyl ring is on a wedge. We didn't attack that center. So we're going to leave that stereochemistry alone. If there was no reaction occurring at carbon one, the stereochemistry should not change. So we'll draw that wedge and I'm just gonna abbreviate the, the benzene ring as phenyl here. So pH is an abbreviation for that if you're trying to just draw something quickly to get to a product. And so after that, you'll have this as a, an anion until you add in some sort of proton source. And that's what we're doing in the second step is we're adding in water just to protonate this oxygen. So we will add a hydrogen there, meaning we're gonna make this into an alcohol. So we will see as our product that we've got that ethyl chain still attached to carbon number two. Now we've got the alcohol on carbon number one, and then we still have that wedged bond to the benzene ring. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the numbers back in. And we're gonna take a look and see if we can find this option down here. And we can see right here, that what we have drawn matches D. And this is a single bond that can spin. So don't let it throw you off that I have this pointing down and this is pointing up. Um, you have free rotation there. So these are actually the same molecule.